except the hammamat and the graveyards. Explicitly mentioning that the graveyard is not a place to do salah. What were these people doing and what do they continue to do today? They go and pray specifically there and then they turn their fingers and say, we are Wahhabis. Tayyip, they don't listen. We said, don't travel. These, they said, we shall travel. We said, look, don't build anything. They said, we will build. Tayyip, now that you're there and assuming there's a dead man in that grave on which there's a big, big shrine with, you know, golden fence and, you know, nice fancy carpets. You know, thousands of, of reals are spent on maintaining these things, right? Flowers are brought all the time, blah, blah, blah. Tayyip, but there's a dead man there. Can he hear you? Can the dead hear the living? If so, then when your best friend dies, it doesn't matter. You can go over there and still say, how's it going, man? You know, life's good. I got a new, you know, uh, a new uh, channel on YouTube, a new page on Facebook. Life is good. How's everything with you? And you know, he sent him a text message. <laughs> Can people do? You see people going now. Who does that, by the way? The kuffar. They go. They have a conversation with the dead person. And you know, it, you know, to us this is something reprehensible. There's no such thing. There's no such thing. Now we will explain because some people have a misunderstanding. First, brothers and sisters in Islam, the Quran specifically and directly addresses this issue. Two ayat that cannot be refuted or disputed concerning this matter. The first one, Allah says to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, إِنَّكَ لَا تُسْمِعُ الْمَوْتَىٰ وَلَا تُسْمِعُ الصُّمَّ الدُّعَاءَ إِذَا وَلَّوْ مُدْبِرِينَ Verily, you cannot make the dead hear. You cannot make the dead hear. And you cannot make the deaf hear the call when they turn around and retreat. Allah is telling the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the same way you're giving da'wah to these kuffar, and they're not hearing you, they're not hearing you. Why? Because they are just like the dead people who don't hear. You give da'wah, there's no benefit. Who does that remind you of? The dead people, you speak to them and there's no benefit. You see the, the analogy. It, I mean, this is clear. This is the tafsir of the ulama. No one denies this tafsir. Now, this is one interpretation. On one ayah, I'm sorry. So you cannot make the kuffar hear the invitation to Islam for they are like the dead who do not hear either. The second ayah, وَمَا يَسْتَوِي الْأَحْيَاءُ وَلَا الْأَمْوَاتِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ يُسْمِعُ مَنْ يَشَاءُ وَمَا أَنْتَ بِمُسْمِعٍ مَنْ فِي الْقُبُورِ Verily, and the living and the dead are not equal. Are they equal? We just said, are they equal? No, they're not equal. We have a whole other way than that, that of the dead people. We, have, we can go do salah, we can do many things. There, it's over for them. So Allah said they're not alike. Then Allah went on to say, Verily, Allah makes whomever He wills hear, and you cannot make those in the graves hear you. Listen to that. وَمَا أَنْتَ بِمُسْمِعٍ مَنْ فِي الْقُبُورِ You know قبر. And you cannot make those in the graves hear. <coughs> who's saying this? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Telling who? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa You cannot make the people in the grave hear you. So when these people go on and call on these people, they don't even hear them. And we will see the ayat in the refutation of that. Tayyip. Now why do they insist? Why do they insist that it is okay to do what they're doing? Because of two narrations which they have misunderstood and misinterpreted. And we will deal with these narrations so we will know. The hadith of Abu Talha, he reported, on the day of the battle of Badr, the Prophet ﷺ ordered that the bodies of 24 of the dead of Quraysh will be thrown in, an, in a foul, stinky well in Badr. There's a well, you know the well, where there's water. It was bad, busted, stinky, whatever, the dead animals there, Allah was there. He ordered that 24 of their bodies will be thrown where? In there. There's no hurma for the, for the disbelievers. There's no يعني, honoring them or respecting them in this particular sense, especially those ones. Otherwise, if a non-Muslim dies, then you bury him in the ground as well. But you don't give him the janazah prayer. طيب, on the third day, 
the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, mounted his, his animal and he head out. The Sahaba said he must be going to something important. So they went after him. When the Prophet وسلم, made it there, he began addressing those in the well, calling them, addressing them name by name, O oh, so and so, the son of so and so, and O oh, so and so, the son of so and so. He mentioned their names. Then he said, have we have found that which our Lord promised to be true. Have you found that which Allah has promised you to be true? We have found victory. We have found the Nasr which Allah promised us. Have you found the punishment which you were asking for? Now, this is a very important incident. Now, if you just stop there, if you just stop here actually, what does it appear? It appears like the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, is addressing dead people. But, but you have to read the continuation. So, Umar said, you know Umar, Umar is not your average man. Umar, the revelation came in agreement with him and in disagreement with even Abu Bakr and the Prophet وسلم, more than once. More than once. Like the captives of the battle where Abu Bakr said, you know, set them free, we'll have him teach us, you know, something. And Umar said, mm. and Allah revealed the revelation in agreement with Umar. The one whom the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, said, if there was to be a prophet after me, it would be Umar. Umar knew the deen. Umar knew Islam. When he saw the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi address these dead people, he said, what are you saying to these bodies without souls? What are you saying to these bodies without souls? Do they hear? He's, now he's confused. He's confused. Do they hear? For Allah, the Majestic says, Verily you cannot make the dead hear. The one we mentioned earlier. Right? إِنَّكَ لَا تُسْمِعُ الْمَوْتَ Now, Umar had an understanding that you cannot make them hear and you're speaking to them. You know what? You're addressing bodies without souls. Do they hear? Now, if he was wrong, according to the agreement of the ulama, that the job, one of the jobs of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi was to correct people. In such instances, it must be done instantly. There's no takhir. There should be no takhir in bayan al-hukum when the situation is of this nature. Had Umar been wrong, first the Messenger of Allah should have, should have said to him, no, who told you? The dead people here. Dead people here. This ayah doesn't mean that. And he would have explained. As in the ayah about, you know, those who believe and they do not mix their iman with zulm. And the Sahaba said, you know, zulm? You know, lahum al -am. These will have security. These will be the victorious one. The Sahaba looked at themselves, which one of us doesn't have zulm, oppression? Which one of us doesn't wrong himself? So they were, they were troubled by this ayah. That the ayah says that unless you have to be a perfect believer basically, for you, you know, to be safe. So they went to the Messenger of Allah said, Ya, ya Rasulullah, this ayah is heavy. It's saying, you know, alladheena amanu, and the rest of the ayah. He said, no, zulm here, does not mean the sins. Zul means shirk. Have you not heard the statement of Luqman? Inna zul, inna shirka la zulmun azim. So he explained to the Sahaba who mis misunderstood an ayah that zulm in that ayah meant shirk. If you believe in Allah and you don't mix it with shirk, you will be safe. It doesn't mean wrongdoing, which is any sin is a zulm to oneself. So we learn from the seerah then that when the time, when, when it was necessary, the Prophet ﷺ would do what? He would correct the Sahaba on the understanding of the ayah. Like in many other occasions, right? When he mentioned, 